Okay, now without further ado, let's begin. Okay, let's begin today's session, right? So uh, anyway, uh, anyway, right? Before we begin, I always need to share with you guys a disclaimer that you know, and, um, this webinar, uh, this webinar is purely um, educational in nature, right? So nothing, sh uh, nothing covered in this webinar should be construed as investment advice and trading advice. So please, you know, do your own little due diligence before you start trading, especially, you know, the world of crypto, the world of CFDs, right? Very high risk, right? So, um, so yes, you know, always do your own due diligence before you trade. All right, guys. Now, um. Uh, if you're, um, for those of you who are just tuning in, I encourage you to send your messages throughout the webinar. I, I literally have another screen that is open here, uh, monitoring your questions that are coming through, right? So yeah, just take a chance to, to send it through. Otherwise, you know, I'm, I'm afraid that we might not have time to, um, to touch on these questions towards the end of the webinar, right? So yeah, so just don't worry, okay? Just send your, just send your questions through. All right, now, guys, um, First and foremost, right, introducing your host for today. Uh, my name is Desmond Leong. You guys might have seen me around. Uh, you might see me around. You know, I write a lot of the research and, and analysis for um, Tickmill. You know, on the Tickmill blog, right? Some things, I guess, um, worth. Um, where's my handy dandy pen? Yeah. Uh, yes, uh, so, some things are just a, a really short introduction of me, right? I run the award-winning research firm, uh, Everest Fortune Group, and also the Forex Army, right? So we are finalists for 2019, 2020, and 2021 for best FX and equity research. So, you know, our, our team, we have a pretty strong team of CFA, CMT, and CFTE accredited traders, right? Um, and usually we, you know, we regularly advise banks, brokers, and hedge funds. We have a special partnership with Tickmill where we try to bring you the institutional grade research um, the institu uh, institutional great education, you know, uh, to help you navigate the markets better, right? So yeah, you know, I, I, I do some crazy indicators and EAs over at the Forex Army. And if you want to uh, follow me on Instagram, you know, can check out Comfy Desmond. Nothing interesting there, right? It's mainly me and my cat uh, and me playing FIFA, right? Uh, not much of that kind of, um, you know, the kind of uh, what we call... Um, uh, Instagram traders, you know, where it's Lamborghinis and stuff. It's a very chill place, right? So yeah, you know, for those of you guys who uh, want to check it out. Uh, anyway, right, without further ado, let me tell you, let me share with you what's the agenda for today, right? So our agenda for today is, you know, we're going to cover, firstly, what is um, cryptocurrency, right? Uh, right? I can see Aruna already sending in a question, right? Um whether um, Bitcoin currently has a bounce trap on, um, and whether we think 40K, you know, is, is a bear trap. Uh, we'll take a look at that. Hopefully we can maybe throughout the webinar or towards the end of the webinar where I got my charts prepared to share, to share with you actually how do you trade Bitcoin and what affects the price of Bitcoin, right? So, um, so hopefully you get time to look at that, right? Um, for those of you guys who have been following the Tick Mill blog, right? We did call the bounce uh, right above the 30K level. So if you got in on that, awesome right if not now my plenty of opportunities right plenty of opportunities right but in today's webinar what we're going to cover is you know what exactly is cryptocurrency um what exactly is bitcoin right um uh, we touch a little bit on bitcoin mining right because um it traditionally is a pretty um it's a pretty popular question right is what is bitcoin mining what is the halving you know, when, when, when the rewards get cut by half, right? What is, uh, is it, is it profitable? You know, we as traders, you know, always looking for ways to make money when it comes to trading, right? So, you know, is Bitcoin mining profitable, right? And of course we look at some ways we can trade Bitcoin, right? Everyone knows we can trade Bitcoin on, on the crypto exchanges, but we will take a look at uh, trading Bitcoin on, um, on take me later. Okay. But anyway, I just want to share with you really quickly on what is cryptocurrency. The, the, the definitions you get out there more often than not, you know, it, it gives it, it leaves you, it leaves you with a little bit more questions than you started, <laughs> right? So sometimes, you know, cryptocurrency, you're, uh, you're, you're, you know, go on Google and you're like, okay, what is cryptocurrency? And they're like, okay, it's cryptography, you know, it's decentralized blockchain, right? And you're like, what in the world did I just read, All right? So today, I just take a little bit of time to explain to you, um, um, 
uh, yeah, yeah. So I'll take a little bit of time to explain to you um, on what cryptocurrency is. We got a question coming in from Janu saying that you know, the topic is cryptocurrency agenda seems to be uh, focused quite a bit on Bitcoin, right? So he's asking, you know, you know, are you are you saying it's the same rules, features, and risks that are related to other cryptocurrencies, right? So as you can see over here, you know, what is cryptocurrency? Um, we don't just zoom in on the Bitcoin. Right, we don't just zoom in on Bitcoin. We have Ethereum, we got Litecoin, we got Dodge. Okay, they're not Dodge, right? Um, but you know, we can add probably Dogecoin here or something, you know, can a Bitcoin hash, right? But essentially, um, it is um Bitcoin is just one of the cryptocurrencies, it is the most um uh popular cryptocurrency, right? But that is not to say that there are not other cryptocurrency uh, other cryptocurrencies around, right? So so a lot of um a lot of what applies to Bitcoin, understanding how Bitcoin comes about, the logic behind it, the 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 way it is mined, it is equally applicable, you know, to Litecoin is equally applicable to Ethereum and Dash, right? So so yeah, you know, um, uh, I'm just making reference to uh, Bitcoin as as you know as more or less the the leader. There are a lot of different altcoins out there, and there are some really really exotic ways to trade them. Uh, I mean, there. <laughs> if you dive deep enough, you know, you see there are a lot of pump and dump kind of schemes out there. You know, a lot of fake celebrity endorse endorsements that try to push up the popularity and price of different altcoins, right? And um, in some way, a, um, I'm not sure if you, uh, you guys have actually um, seen penny stocks before. Uh, you know, one of the um, penny stocks are very notorious in the past for excuse me, yeah, penny stocks were very notorious in the past um, for stuff like pump and dump, right? So in some sense, all the many, many altcoins out there, you know, all the different ICOs, uh, it being so easy to create um, like, like different kind of um, cryptocurrencies has made it actually very, very dangerous where um, this pump and dump scheme is super, um, now it's super prevalent, uh, seen everywhere. And the worst thing is that because of, you know, how, uh, you know, the, the, there isn't really uh, that strong a regulation, you know, monitoring these kind of um, cryptocurrencies, especially as smaller altcoins, people can easily get away with it, right? But, um, and that is why in this case uh, today, we're actually focusing on the slightly larger cap um, cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin, Ethereum, Dash, in some sense, even Dodge, right? And, uh, and yeah, so we are looking at the functionality, how it's created, right? And what kind of, um, gives it value, right? Because a lot of people out there, you know, when it comes to trading crypto, you know, we kind of just treat it as like any other commodity, any other instrument to be traded, right? Today's session, you know, um, and hopefully in further sessions, right, we'll look at really not only the appreciation of crypto, but what drives its value, you know, from a fundamental perspective, what drives its value from a technical perspective and how we can kind of play the fluctuations, uh, you know, how we can play the big, big moves, you know, uh, how we can, you know, stay out of uh, getting caught on the wrong side of Elon Musk, <laughs> you know, kind of <laughs> announcements, right? It's, a, it's an exciting space, right? It's growing in huge popularity and hence, you know, uh, today's webinar, right? So first and foremost, you know, cryptocurrencies. Yeah, and anyway, thanks for that question, Janus. Janus, right? So first and foremost, you know, the, the big question, right? You know, what is cryptocurrency? You know, um, first thing that I want to focus on it is that it's kind of, um, it's, uh, it's like digital or virtual currencies that is secured by cryptography, right? Cryptography. Um, so the important thing is that cryptography, you know, it makes it hard to be counterfeited, right? So, you know, yeah, people always first thing come in and say, okay, okay, you know, um, before you start throwing out those big jargons here and there, you know, what, uh, what exactly is cryptography, right? Uh, essentially, in a nutshell, cryptography, right? Um, you know, it's a matter of kind of protecting your information, uh, and communications through the use of code, right? So it makes it very, very hard for people to reverse engineer and kind of break it. So it's like a super duper secure system, right? So a large part of cryptocurrency is based on cryptography. So it makes it very hard, uh, you know, to be counterfeited, very hard to uh, this very, very um, important term, like, you know, being able to double spend, right? And uh, important thing that we want to take note of is that it's also a decentralized network, a lot of people, you know, are saying, okay, you know, um, every time you see um, cryptocurrency, it goes hand in hand with decentralized, it goes hand in hand with the word blockchain. So the key question that comes in is, wait, what, what is blockchain, 
right? Can you explain blockchain to me? Um, you know, in a in a very very simple form. You know, can you explain blockchain to me that you know that that you know I don't get lost within the first five you know the the, the first five words, right? Um, all you need to know about blockchain is that you know it's 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 a specific type of of database. You know, it's just like like uh, putting multiple where's my mouse, right? Multiple blocks together, right? That's why you know um actually um for those of you guys who read the white paper, I uh, read the white paper on um um on bitcoin right uh, no, there was actually no mention of blockchain there was no mention of blockchain instead it will <laughs> uh, instead the closest it actually went to was what we call a chain of blocks right so that was the closest to actually the mention of blockchain right but it is it, basically you know um uh, is most most of the time it's kind of used for leisure of you know uh, of transactions right um the important thing Right, the important reason why we're using blockchain is that you know we we don't want a single person or group you know to have control over it. What does this mean? Okay, um, who who remembers you know what the Britannica was? Who oh actually who actually owned one of these encyclopedias? Right, I'm I'm curious. Right, <laughs> within our audience over here, who uh, and this gives me an idea of like you know <laughs> which generations we come from. Who actually owned you know one of these en encyclopedias before? Uh, you know who who owned it? Who didn't own it? Maybe you can if if you can share with me, right? Uh, you know, kind of give me an idea on on am I the only guy over here who actually own an encyclopedia? Oh, uh, Janus, yeah, he has one. Um, Roshan is um, yeah, Roshan. I can see you raising your hand. Don't worry. Oh, you're raising your hand because you're answering. Okay, no worries. I I can see the people who raise their hands over here. Right. Okay. Um. Yeah, uh, okay, a couple of you guys uh, do own an encycl encyclopedia. So um, Britannica, right? Britannica, at one point of time, they employed over um, 100 writers, right? 100 writers, or was it 1,000 writers? And all they did was they tried to, they tried to um, consolidate the world's information, right? And you can see how that is very dangerous. Because you know, um, Britannica, in that sense, you know, you're like a centralized exchange. You know, you're like a centralized database, and every, and you control all the information that is kind of going out, right? So it is very easy to um, to be manipulated if you think about it, right? You know, some guy in Britannica is like, oh, you know, um, Donald Trump. You know, oh, okay, what shall we put in this little section on Donald Trump, right? They, uh, you know, was he a great guy? Was he a bad guy? Was he a crazy guy? Right, you know, it's up to them to control it, right? So, um, so the problem with that, right? And that's just one topic. You imagine the world of Wikipedia where there's like a freaking million, you know, different topics on there, right? If it's all controlled by a single company like Britannica, it's very dangerous because it's, you know, can be easily manipulated, right? There, you know, you can uh, give given enough power, right? Or uh, you know, given enough motivation, you know, you can do crazy stuff with it. Right, and that's why uh, uh, Wikipedia is the is an example of what we call a decentralized exchange, a, a decentralized database, right? Where there are multiple people adding in um, their their inputs into um, into Wikipedia, right? This is um, not the um, the best. Okay, this is actually a pretty good example of what we call um, by um, a centralized and decentralized. Right, centralized. The dangers of you know something being centralized is that everyone can control it. No, no, it's like there's a single person, a single company can control it, and that is a danger and stuff. Right. Um. Later, I'll go on to explaining. Right. If you think about it. Right. If you think about it. Right. Things like um, things like, what's the word for it? Um, central banks. Right. Um, printing money. <laughs> you know, these are these are central banks, you know. So in a, in a way it, it borrows on the word, you know, uh central, you know, centralized systems, central central banks just deciding to print money, right? Um, oh, you know, what's gonna happen? We um, you know, as a financial crisis, what shall we do? Foo, you know, just print some money, right? And uh, and you know the value of the currency drops, right? And um in serious cases, you know, um, you know, your your currency become worthless. Right, so that's the danger of it, and we'll be touching a little bit on that later. But importantly, the one thing that I want to kind of share with you is that you know cryptocurrencies focus on like a decentralized exchange where you know there are multiple people, like everyone controls it. Like Wikipedia is controlled by the people, 
right? Wikipedia is controlled by the people and versus uh, Britannica, which is just controlled by a single company, right? So, so you know, it's um, very importantly, it's not controlled by central authority. So, you know, it is theoretically, theoretically immune to the government interference. Uh, I really seriously need to improve my, <laughs> my, my drawing, right? It's, it's theoretically immune to the government's interference and it's immune to its manipulation. So, um, so you know, when I say manipulation, you know, um, I don't mean it in just a good or bad way. You know, manipulation, like, you know, uh, you've seen how China can have a floating exchange rate. You know, they can pack their currencies, they can print more, you know, so that, you know, their exports are cheaper, you know. So those are kind of like currency manipulation on a small, large or legal scale, right? But, but cryptocurrency, you can't do that debatable in some sense right on uh it might not be immune to government interference but you know it might be immune to uh, might not be fully immune to crazy uh, to guys like elon musk you know uh and you know giving um the way it's almost being like um manipulated to a certain degree right but um a a as it further develops you know it it, it will build up that kind of immunity Right. But this is also one of the things that actually affects uh, the, the, the price of Bitcoin, which is in the same way um, uh, affects the price of, you know, um, fiat coins, fiat currencies like the euro, the dollar, the Australian dollar, right? Any news that comes out on it, you know, can affect the price, right? But at least it's immune to like interference and manipulation, okay? Now, um, we, we do want to touch on one important thing, uh, which is like, what exactly is Bitcoin, right? Everyone knows Bitcoin. Okay, you know, it's like a digital currency, virtual currency, um, a little bit. That, that You know, on, on the surface, that might seem what it is. But what if I, um, what if I just kind of take it one level deeper and try to let you know the mean, you know, what exactly is Bitcoin? To me, Bitcoin is actually... You know, it kind of changes the trust model. Okay, so so you know, um, follow me, right? Um, imagine you know back in the day, right when before currencies were created, you know we had we had little tiny gold bars, right? We got no not tiny gold bars, we got gold bars, you know, um, which which um which has a value. The important thing about gold bars, right, back then is that you know gold bars, and one of the reasons why it's still so popular today, is that it has a limited value. There's only that number of that that limited number of gold bars that can be mined in this entire world, and that is why um and there's one important distinction: it has limited value, and it's very you know it, you you can't just decide to print more gold bars, <laughs> you know. So okay, so one of the important things is that gold bars you know have limited value. But back in the day, right guys, back in the day, you know we walk around and like okay, I I, I want to buy, I you know I want to go for a haircut, right? I go to barber. And, you know, uh, maybe I give you a gold coin and stuff like that. Uh, no, even before gold coins, you know, <laughs> I mean, I, I shave off a little bit of gold and I give him, it's like, okay, you know, this is how many grams of gold. Um, and uh, yeah, this is how many grams of gold I like my haircut, right? So back in the day, that was gold, you know, um, we, 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 we had something, we had gold, right? Then along the way, right, we, um, we decided that, you know, the, the banks, the government came in and it's like, hey, you know, I'm going to, uh, with that one gold bar, you know, you can exchange it for one hundred dollars. So the if you think about like the real definition of fiat, um, if I'm not wrong, the Latin meaning behind it is that you know there is um, is basically what's the word for it? Is that uh, value is given to it, right? Um, meaning, right? Uh, in this case, right, the central bank, the government decides that you know, okay, this is a hundred dollars. So, um, so you can actually take your gold and you can go into the bank and you say that, okay, instead of carrying around little gold bars and like chopping, <laughs> but chopping them up, a little bit hard to chop, but you know, chopping them up so that I can buy stuff, right? Now I can just weigh the gold, right? And I can just go and exchange it for maybe a hundred bucks, a hundred dollars, right? I do my shopping. Uh, once I got a hundred dollars, I can go back and, you know, I can exchange it for, for gold. All right, so at the core of it, you know, um, it's all an issue of trust. You know, we started off at gold and then we start, we go to fiat currencies, right? And, and you know, this day and age, you know, um, fiat currencies, you know, it's, it's owned by anyone, right? But you, you must think about it. Think about it very, very carefully. There's a small distinction here. Previously, we were trusting something, gold. Now we are trusting someone. You know, uh, not, not exactly this guy, but you get what I mean, the central bank, the government, 
right? Previously, it's gold. You know, just mine, you know that there is only that fixed number of gold in the world which you can mine up, right? But now you're trusting this guy. You're trusting the government, whether it's the US government, it's the Singapore government, you know, Botswana government, you trust someone, right? And what is the downside of, you know, fiat currency? What is the downside of fiat currency? You know, if you zoom into it, right, there's one big problem, uh, rather two big problems. Firstly, it is centralized. And who remembers uh, our earlier example, which I was sharing with you guys on, on, on this, right? On the Britannica, centralized. When, when something is centralized, when something is controlled by like a central authority, which was what the Britannica wanted to do in the past, you know, be the central authority to, uh, to decide um, information, right? There is dangers to manipulation. There is dangers to misrepresentation. There is dangers to a lot of stuff, right? They might just say, who is Google, right? In today's um, 100 print of the Britannica Encyclopedia, we decided to remove Google, right? It's a fraud, you know, because Microsoft Bing decided to pay us enough money to <laughs> remove Google, right? So, you know, it's very dangerous in that sense where, you know, as if it's a central authority, right? Um, uh, uh, okay, I got um, something coming in from Janu saying that um, I think everyone should be able to see it too, you know, regarding the government right manipulations. Um, uh, uh, what's happening this year with Bitcoin prices um, and also other cryptocurrencies is result of decisions of China government. They put serious restrictions on Bitcoin mining and trading in China, which seriously impact the crypto market. And that is one thing which uh, we will touch on towards the end of the webinar on what affects the prices of cryptocurrency. Right. So yeah, there are um, uh, there are ways that uh, and this is not just recently, guys. If you remember, a lot of different um, a lot of different there are a lot of different news that has affected the prices of cryptocurrency on a government level, on a company level. PayPal deciding to accept crypto, boom. Some banks deciding to add, uh, allow crypto, boom. You know, uh, don't worry, don't worry, Janus. You're, you're not interfering, right? I, I actually encourage these kind of questions along the way. It's, it's great to see questions come true. You know, it, it facilitates discussions. And, you know, that's what we want to do in this webinar, right? So, so, um, so yeah, you know, your point on um, this kind of uh, manipulation, um, this is not like so-called direct manipulation, right? If you think about it, it's not really direct manipulation. It is, um, there are... Uh, it's you know it's it's not like they are, they are going in there they are deploying their supercomputers and trying to take over um, Bitcoin right but they are, they are, they're having things that make Bitcoin harder like and this is not only um, for China right yeah, previously you know there are, there are some countries like maybe Finland right they whether they welcome um, people to mine or you know they say hey you know, get off a country right um, um, you know, you know, your, your, your mining is, you know, it's too expensive. It's not non-sustainable. All these kind of things, you know, it kind of affects the price of Bitcoin, but it's, it isn't exactly, if you think about it, when I think talking about manipulation, right? Let's just say, what can a central bank do, right? A central bank can print money, right? Can China, can, can China, can the US, can anyone print Bitcoins? If you think about it, no, right? Can Google, right? Can Google print Bitcoins? Right. So the interesting thing is like uh, people are asking, uh, what if uh, the big boys Google, what the big boys and Google decide to um, uh, mine cryptocurrency, right? If you think about it, guys, the, when it comes to world of crypto, right, the, the Bitcoin, uh, the, the crypto mining network or a Bitcoin mining network, computing network is about 10,000 times bigger than all of Google's, you know, computing network combined. So it's not much if you think about it, right? And and so you, you kind of don't need to worry that, you know, uh, uh, governments are able to like print, you know, uh, print currencies. And I, I'm going to talk about stuff like inflation, deflation slightly later, right? But yeah, it's, you know, um, without deviating too much, you know, um, the central authority, if you think about it over here, um, you know, uh, fiat currencies has a central authority. And the problem with that, you know, you got a little printing machine that can print money. Right. Oh, you know, there is, if you've seen it in the US, right, it's like how much, how much money does the US own? You know, someone, anyone want to take guesses? Right? It's freaking, <laughs> it's so much, right? And every time they're in trouble, right? Oh, um, COVID has hit us. What shall we do? We are going to print more money, right? A stimulus package, print more money. More stimulus package, print more money, right? And the more money you put into the system, 
right? The more money you put in the system, what happens to the money you're holding, right? The money you're holding, you know, is worth less. It's the basic law of supply and demand. Imagine you're holding a, you're, you're holding an iPhone, right? iPhones are able to, you know, are able to hold its value very well. What if one day, you know, Apple just decides, you know, we're going to just, because we want everyone to have an iPhone, we're going to um, just give out free iPhones, right? The price of iPhone would plummet, right? That's an extreme kind of case. But if you look at, you look at, uh, look at fiat currencies, that, you know, it happens so much, right? In fact, it's the building blocks of what, of what we use to even buy iPhones and stuff, right? When you need stimulus packages, you just print money. Right, and that causes you know the prices of uh the, the prices of cryptocurrency, you no, know, the prices of uh fiat to decrease, right? So that's one of the downsides of, of fiat currencies, and uh, and it's one of the reasons why Bitcoin is so popular because it's decentralized and you know it's limited. There's actually only twenty one million bitcoins that are allowed um to be what's the word for it uh allowed to be so called printed. Okay, now um importantly. Some people are going to say, wait, what? Uh, okay, not print, I mean mine, right? So you mean there's a limited amount of Bitcoins that can be mined? Yes, right? Um, Bitcoins, you know, it started, you know, in 2009, you know, the first block of Bitcoin, right? The first block of Bitcoin, uh, where is my word? Yeah, the, the, the first block of Bitcoin, right? You know, will give you 50 Bitcoins. You know, one block will give you 50 Bitcoins, right? And then, you know, you can mine another, um, two, you know, you can mine a total of 210,000 Bitcoins uh, blocks, right? And it will give you 50 Bitcoins each. And, and what happens next is that the next one, right? The 210,001, right? Will give you half the number of Bitcoins. So you notice is, you know, divided by two, right? It's divided by two, it's divided by two. Roughly, you know, by uh, 24, um, 2140, right? By the year 2140, you know, we should be out of Bitcoins to mine. Right, so so that's the important thing to take note of because um, later I'll be showing you if you some of the meaning of Bitcoin mining difficulties and stuff like that, right? But yes, you know there is a limited number of Bitcoins that can be mined in the world. Okay, important distinction, right? And um, if you ever heard of this thing called the halving, right? If you ever heard of this thing called the halving, right? This is exactly what it means, right? Where your Bitcoins get half. Right, you know, from the from one block before from fifty it goes to twenty five, from twenty five it goes to fifteen, from fifty no from to twelve, twelve point five goes to six point two five, so it gets half and half and half until there's zero, right? So that's what the halving means. When you see it, this is what it means. That means one block actually gives you half the amount of bitcoins, right? Half the reward, right? So you know, you know people tend to ask, you know, what it, you know what exactly is Bitcoin mining, right? Um, it's massive, massive, huge servers out there, right? Massive, massive, huge servers that are put in place um, to to get Bitcoin, right? Um, what what I like to say, you know, is uh, it's not who wants to be a millionaire, but you know who wants to be a Bitcoin banker, <laughs> right? Because um, important thing that you need to take note about Bitcoin, anyone can participate. Literally, anyone can participate. Right, so you know, it's like um, today I decided to be a Bitcoin miner. I, I, I can start trading, I can start mining Bitcoin right away. I can, I can mine with my computer. Sometimes you can mine with your handphone, right? But yeah, you know, you can start, uh, you know, there is no restrictions behind who can mine. However, how it works is that, you know, you need to guess a random number, um, you know, that solves the equation generated by, you know, by the system. And this guessing is done by your computer. It's not, but not, it's not done by you. This the guessing is done by your computer, okay? So, so because of that, the stronger your computer, right? The stronger your computer, the more guesses per second and hence the higher chances of winning. And I'm not sure if many of you guys, right? Have, have ever tried to buy a computer recently or try to buy a graphics card recently. It is so damn expensive. <laughs> it's so damn expensive because so many people out there are, you know, they are buying computers, they're buying GPUs, they're buying CPUs, they're buying all these different kind of you know graphics card to mine um, cryptocurrency, right? And and when that happens, it causes it to be more expensive, right? So why is that happening? Because people want stronger computers. People want stronger computers because you know it helps them make more guesses per second and it gives you a higher chance of winning. 
And uh, at the core of it, at the core of it, cryptocurrency mining, you know, basically, basically, you know, is, is actually meant to maintain the ledger in a decentralized manner, right? Because what actually happens, what actually happens when Bitcoin miner, you know, you're, you're, you're a miner over here and you get it right, right? You know, you, you, you mine, you mine, you mine. It's like, oh, I got it right, right? Um, I got the answer. I got the answer, right? You, uh, you now have the right to, um, you know, to look at the next pending transaction, you know, um, you can move it from pending transaction and kind of move it into confirmed transactions, right? All you know, it's like you get to go in and be a temporary banker, a temporary Bitcoin banker in the whole Bitcoin network. And you're over there and you're gonna, you know, you're gonna, uh, what are you gonna do? You're gonna uh, fill up that ledger, right? So you actually get to fill up the ledger in the Bitcoin network, right? So that's essentially what it does, you know? So Bitcoin mining, you know, is not just like mining and stuff like, like um, gold mining, right? A lot of it is draws parallel to, to, you know, mining gold because of this reason, but essentially what you're doing, right? Essentially what you're doing is you're trying to maintain the ledger in a decentralized manner, Right. So remember, I talked to you about the decentralized. Where is it? You know the um, the yeah the um, the decentralized manner. I don't have a picture here. Never mind. Right. Yeah, I don't have a picture here. But yeah, you know, it's meant to maintain the the ledger in a decentralized manner. Okay. So that's the very very important thing that you need to take take note of on when it comes to Bitcoin mining. So some people will ask, you know, um. With this Bitcoin mining, should should I get into it, right? Should I, should I start mining Bitcoin, right? Um, can I make money with uh, mining Bitcoin? Should I stop trading? <laughs> should I start mining Bitcoin, right? So um, uh, the important thing about the creator of Bitcoin is that um, when he created Bitcoin, um, he 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 had this equation that was put into place, which is you know the the more difficult it is to mine Bitcoin, right? The more power it kind of requires. So it is self-adjusting. Oops, oops. Yeah, it is self-adjusting, right? So the reason why um, um, Bitcoin mining, so Bitcoin mining in the past was a lot easier than it is now, right? Bitcoin mining in the past is a lot easier than it is now. It's, you know, whether the first guys who are mining cryptocurrency, right? They can mine with maybe their, their laptops. They can mine with, a very very simple system, right? Just like oh, you know, oh man, um, um, you're watching YouTube and on the site, maybe you can mine some cryptocurrencies. It's very it's very easy, right? But the more difficult it, it becomes, the more people who come in to compete, right? The more power it requires. And we just take a look over here. This is the competition you're up against now, right? Like, like, uh, like this super powered Bitcoin mining farms, right? These are the people you're against now, right? So your, your little, you know, uh, Intel, you know, um, Pentium, <laughs> Pentium 5, i5, i7, i9 kind of um, um, CPU, can you use it to mine? Yeah, you can. Do you stand a chance? Probably not, right? Because these guys are getting so many more um, guesses in. Um, there's so much more. Yeah, it's like the Matrix, man. Aruna is like a freaking Matrix, right? So there's so many of these around, so many Bitcoin mining farms, right? So, you know, it, it, you stand a low chance, you know, if you use a very like consumer grade kind of um, um, mining thing, right, uh, to um, uh, to compete, right? So Bartholomew is asking, is there any handout for this webinar? Um, I don't think there's a handout, but I think this will be recorded for um, the YouTube series, right? So hang in there, you know, we'll... Um, uh, I, I, there might be, there might be, I, I can't confirm it. Right. But anyway, moving on from there is self-adjusting. So the smart thing about this, right. The super duper smart thing, right. That the Takishi, uh, I can't even pronounce his name. I'm so sorry. Right. Uh, if you guys, anyone can, can spell out, um, you know, supposed creator of Bitcoin. Um, if you can spell out his name for me, that'd be great. I can't fully remember his name, but, um, but yeah, you know, it's self-adjusting, right? And it's meant to actually create uh, Yachimoto. Is it Yachimoto? I don't think it's Yachimoto, right? It's Takeshi something, right? <laughs> right, but um, essentially, you know, it kind of creates a, a steady flow of Bitcoin to the system. Meaning that we, you know, we can't be like the central banks out there, you know, we can't just go in and just print uh, Bitcoins like crazy because when you do too much of that, what happens? That's inflation right? Do too much of that, that's inflation. So this guy is really smart, 
right? He was like, okay, you know, I I I got to make this the the way bitcoins were mined, bitcoins were created. I need to create some kind of um logic or algorithm to it that you know it makes it tougher to mine the more people are in it, the more people want this. Um, currency, I need to create like a self-regulating kind of um, equation mechanism so that people are not just print the hell out of it, right? You print too much of it, you know, a super inflation. Imagine if we are so easy to print Bitcoins, would it be worth a lot of money now? No, right? Um, the very reason why it's worth so much is because, you know, it's just so damn hard to just print, uh, you know, to mine Bitcoin, right? So that's a very, very smart thing you did. So you notice that's an inbuilt mechanism to Bitcoin that actually fights inflation. Now, isn't that so damn smart? Right, I think it's pretty smart, right? So yeah, you know, it fights inflation. So on average, on average, you know, over large, large, large numbers, you get a, a new block every 10 minutes. No matter how many people decide to mine, right? Last time, you know, where a single person mining to now when there it is like a, a crazy number of people who are mining, right? It's roughly still about 10, a new block every 10 minutes, right? That's the important thing to take note of. Right, and because of this, right, there's a flight to strong mining equipment, right? There's a huge flight to strong mining equipment, and that's why I show you the supercomputers out there. You know, we have the you know we have the CPUs, right? We have the GPUs, right? Um, I think now we have the uh, ASI or something, right? But um, it's it that there, there, there was one more the CPUs to GPUs, and then there's there's one more, and now it's like um. It is reach a, a sweet spot where a lot of Bitcoin uh, mining farm, a, a lot of cryptocurrency mining farms use it. Okay, uh, crypto mining pools, right? And I'll be sharing with you a little bit on that later, right? But but anyway, right? Um, one of the big questions that you guys might have for me is, so is crypto, you know, is Bitcoin mining gonna be profitable, right? And that's one thing I want to share with you guys. That uh, <laughs> personally, personally, if you were to ask me. I don't think it's profitable at this point of time, right? But if you want the long answer, the more detailed answer to whether cryptocurrency, uh, Bitcoin mining is going to be profitable, these are the important things that you need to take note of, right? You need to know the hash rate, right? Um, whether block reward, last time your block reward was 50 Bitcoins per block. Now it is what? It is 3.5? Uh, no, no, less than 3.5, right? You know, it gets half and it gets half, 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 right? So the block reward is, is less and each time you get half, it gets even lesser, right? Uh, we need to see the mining difficulty because the more people, the more people who are in it, the more mining power that is required. The more mining power that is required, what happens? The electricity cost increases, right? Um, electricity cost increases, your power consumption increases. And this is legit power consumption. You know, you can't run Bitcoin by, you know, getting a couple of hamsters to run on the wheel and generate kind of, you know, electricity and stuff. You know, you need legit amount of, power to consume it right and and that's why that in, in in many of the um in many kind of crypto mining pools out there right people actually tap onto um uh like illegal sources of power you know like maybe employer doesn't even know that one of his guys is like tapping onto his crypto uh using running his only a crypto farm until he realize that his bill is like freaking expensive right so that's the danger of it right because power consumption of electricity cost is a big thing so much that is actually put into the equation of the cryptocurrency profitability calculator, right? When you want to see whether you can make money. The pool fees, you know, uh, we need to see whether Bitcoin price, you know, imagine if Bitcoin drops to $1, right? Or maybe $10 um, over, you know, tomorrow. Would Bitcoin mining be profitable? Not so much because, you know, your Bitcoin will be worth so much less, right? And, you know, along the way, you know, difficulty kind of increases. So these are important things to take note of when it comes to um, whether Bitcoin mining will be profitable, right? And of course, this is one big thing, right? Uh, if you ever want to go see whether Bitcoin mining is profitable, go search for um, Bitcoin profitability, uh, Bitcoin calculator. I think it's a uh, profitability calculator. You can put in stuff like, you know, what's your hashing power? What's your power consumption? Go to your landlord, ask, you know, what's my cost per kilowatt, right? And you ask whether there's any pool fees that you are, you know, um, maybe you're putting together multiple people, right? Then you can see, you know, what is your cost per day? You know, power is a power cost per day. You're like you obviously need to see what is the price of Bitcoin, right? what is the price of Bitcoin, right? And then you can see whether, you know, is it profitable or not, right? And trust me, it's not so simple for it to be, you know, so-called this profitable, okay? 
So yeah, you do notice that you know um, your cost per day can uh, can increase and decrease, right? Um, depending on you know what's your cost per kilowatt, what's your power consumption, what's your hashing power, right? There are many different things that um, comes into determining the cost of um, Bitcoin. Now, whether Bitcoin mining will be profitable at this point, there are a few um, things out there. There are um, there are Bitcoin mining farms, which honestly, if, unless you go to a really reputable ones, there are actually a lot of Ponzi schemes out there. <laughs> so please be careful, right? It's like, um, what do you call it? Bitcoin, uh, mining clouds, mining clouds, right? Run like the wind, you know, if you actually see any of these Bitcoin mining clouds, because most of the time they're Ponzi schemes. They are multi-million dollars uh, Ponzi schemes, right? So um, stay away from them. There are reputable Bitcoin mining farms which you can invest in, right? You can also pay over the top for, you know, graphics card to create your own little mining farm, right? Those are, there are different things that you can do, right? But yeah, you know, important things to take note of when it comes to Bitcoin mining. Personally, I think at this point, it's not that profitable to mine Bitcoin because if you really, really, really kind of want to make money from Bitcoin, there are different ways to do that. You know, you can actually invest in Bitcoin. You can trade Bitcoin, right? Um, um, uh, Aruna, right? Uh, Aruna is asking, you know, what about Nordic countries where they have natural resources to power electric city? You know, would it not be profitable around there? I mean, yes, it would be profitable if you think about it. Finland, you know, is one of the big popular places where people are, you know, uh, uh, mining Bitcoin. It's profitable, but that does not mean, that does not mean it is, you know, um, it is free money, right? I mean, there's a lot of people fleeing there, but there is still a cost to um, cost to their power generation, right? You know, there is um, there is firstly the opportunity cost of using a mega, uh, what is it? Um, is you imagine you got a super big, you know, uh, wind, not say windmill, but I say a water mill like generating uh, power, right? There's an opportunity cost of what if we just use this little power to um, power the entire town, you know, the entire town instead. Right, instead of mining Bitcoin, so there's an opportunity cost there. Right, of course, electric city will always have a cost that's attached to it. Right, so yeah, you know, it might have. Um, it is not necessarily more profitable, but you know, uh, it's not necessarily definitely profitable. But it is more profitable if you go to places where electric city essentially is cheap. Wow. If I need, if you need me to slow down, just let me know, okay, guys. <laughs> but anyway, let's. Let's take a look at what affects the price of Bitcoin, right? Um, you know, when it comes to Bitcoin, there's one thing that always affects the price of Bitcoin is bad news. Bad news affects Bitcoin because bad news affects adoption. Uh, you know, adoption of Bitcoin means that people are less optimistic about Bitcoin, which is true. Most things in life, most stocks, most currencies, as long as it's bad news, you know, it gets affected. But because Bitcoin, you know, people on Bitcoin, they're always on edge, right? There are a lot of people who are always worried that, you know, um, if there's bad news, uh, Bitcoin might not achieve its, uh, what's the word for it, achieve its potential, right? And then, you know, uh, people don't want to adopt it and then the price drops. So you notice, um, I'm not sure if you guys um, follow it, but you know how Elon Musk, one day he was like, yeah, 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 you know, Tesla's going to accept Bitcoin and boom, right? Because it's good news, right? Uh, and especially good news that is tied to adoption, right? Good news that is tied to adoption. People are like, awesome, Tesla is adopting Bitcoin. That is great for us. The biggest manufacturer of EVs, right, are going to, you know, accept Bitcoin and hence, you know, the price increases a lot, right? But then the moment... Um, uh, Elon Musk says like, oh shit, man, the, man, the um, you know, electric city is so expensive. I'm not even sure if it's sustainable. Suddenly, right, you know, the prices drop because, you know, it affects the adoption. PayPal suddenly comes in with good news, right? Oh yeah, yeah, we're going to allow Bitcoin um, uh, on the PayPal platform. Boom, prices go up. A bank says, that's great, you know, boom, prices go up. Because, you know, um, a, a lot of it is um, linked, especially part particularly to adoption, right? So the next thing, of course, is, you know, um, there's always a perceived value. Um, the perceived value of Bitcoin always sways because of this, because of uncertainty, because of bad news, because it's kind of trying to jostle its way, you know, into the, um, into the world of like being treated as seriously as fiat currencies, right? Many of them say, oh, you know, um, 
we have a central bank, you know, we, uh, in, you know, we have a central bank, you know, you can trust the government who is backing your currency, right? So, you know, uh, Bitcoin is kind of like the, the, a little bit of the outsider, right? You know, cause Chad jostle his way and say, Hey, can you guys please take me seriously? Right. Uh, so yeah, you know, uh, it's true that Aruna says that Elon Musk knew exactly what he was doing in Bitcoin. Right. So, so it's a funny thing. No one can do anything to him. That is the amazing thing, right? No one can do anything to him. He's, he's taking Bitcoin for a ride, right? You know, can make so much money from it. Right. But of course, over time, right, as more and more people adopt it, just not just maybe Elon Musk, right. But you know, uh, if many, many, you know, it becomes as, uh, uh, so many major figures, major countries start adopting Bitcoin, right? Then Elon Musk news won't affect it that much. They'll be like, yeah, you know, sure, you don't want to adopt it, but, you know, Neo and all the hundred other, uh, a thousand other um, big players all adopt it. So it's fine, right? But for now, because Elon Musk, you know, for better or for worse, he, <laughs> you know, he's, you know, he is who he is, right? So he can move the prices very well. And, you know, he can't say that for Tesla, Right, his compliance department will slap him and say, "Hey, you know, you're <laughs> this insider trading and stuff." Right, but for cryptocurrency, he's free to do that. So that's the danger of it. Okay, and it is true. Yeah, Elon Musk knew exactly what he was doing. So, um, so it's um, what the other things that affects the price of Bitcoin, if you think about it, is technical analysis more than anything else. Right, um, cryptocurrency, Bitcoin has a very, very you know a lot of people. Um, a lot of people trade, uh, trade using technical analysis, even more than uh, personally. I feel it's even more than you know the many fiat currencies out there, the USD, the Euro, the pound, the Aussie, right? Um, so many people use Bitcoin, uh, use technical analysis to trade Bitcoin. You go to any, you know, Binance. You go to any of these crypto exchanges. You load the first thing that they show you is not. Okay, here is the news on Bitcoin. You know, the latest uh, monetary policy meeting. You know, nothing about that. Right. The first thing they show you is a chart. The first thing they show you are indicators. The first thing I show you is, you know, um, all of that stuff, right? So, so importantly, right, uh, you'll notice that you know cryptocurrency, you no, know, uh, and Bitcoin in particular is hugely affected by technical analysis. And um, and one thing I do want to show you, let me see if I have it over here, right? Um, is Bitcoin, right? So if you're following following our blog, right, we we did actually call the bounce. Um, very nicely, right? We call the bounce very nicely from here for Bitcoin to bounce up, right? Most people, if you zoom in too much, if you zoom into the one hour chart, right? If you zoom into the one hour chart, you might be thinking, what, uh, what, you know, you know, Bitcoin is dropping like a rock, right? Bitcoin is dropping like a rock, you know, do we think it's going to rise? We're not so sure. But if you look on the one day chart, or even a, where am I? You look on the one day chart, Right, you you notice right that price, and this is very very basic technical analysis, right? You notice that price actually bounce up once, bounce up twice, bounce up three times, bounce up four times, and it's over here. And that is why a lot of people were bullish over here. There are a lot of people buying because price, you know, um, it's not just any other level. This level, you know, has been around since um, uh, since the start of the year actually. And people have not, it has not been able to break past this level, right? And that's why it should bounce very nicely. And why is it slowing down over here, right? It's because if you just draw a resistance area over here, you notice, right? This is what we call an overlap resistance. I'm just going to remove my drawings a bit, but this is what I call overlap resistance, right? Meaning that price reacted off this level, it bounced off this level, you know, reacted, it reacted, right? So this is a big a big area to kind of look at. There's a lot of resistance over here. And that is why you're not seeing crypto just take off as it is, right? So there are a lot of, you know, there's a lot of uh, selling that is going on over there, right? So that's definitely one important thing to take note of, right? I'm not sure if you, you know it, but, um, but Bitcoin, yeah, uh, just give me a second. Yeah, yeah Bitcoin, um, just let me, so. It's had a key level over here. Um, I know one of you guys, or some of you guys actually asked me to do a little bit of analysis on it. Um, shucks, where's my... Uh, if you follow the, the way I do analysis quite nicely, um, let me just do a quick analysis on it. I do notice 38% Fibonacci retracement, very important level to take note of, 
right? Um, you can see that a lot because so many people use technical analysis when it comes to trading Bitcoin. You notice how price, you know, when price dropped down to here, it reacted very nicely off the 23%, right? And I expect it to re react equally nicely over the 38% because this 38% happens to line up very nicely with this overlap resistance, right? Where price bounced off many times in the past. Okay, important thing to take note of. Okay, we can add in a little bit more Fibonacci, but you will go crazy if I do too much on that, right? Uh, in future webinars, maybe we'll touch a little bit more on advanced ways of do, doing Fibonacci, support and resistance, correlation, Ichimoku, trend lines. We can do all that later, okay? Um, but yeah, first and foremost, uh, what affects the price of Bitcoin, right? And you notice if we draw a trend line over here, right? There's already approaching, approaching price over here. I expect there to see a lot of selling over here because people are going to be freaking out. People are going to be freaking out when price come here. You know, people who bought here, they're very happy. They're, they're probably going to cash out over here. Okay, we will need to see whether this big level gets broken, right? In trading, in institutional trading, this is what we call uh, upside confirmation. We need prices to close strongly above this level and strongly above this um, descending trend line to trigger a move upwards. Right, move to where? Maybe first to the 50% retracement, right? Then maybe to the 61.8% retracement, right? But we kind of need to wait price before any of that happens. We need to see the battle that is going on over here, right? So um, even though you might be bullish on Bitcoin, doesn't mean that you hold it forever, right? You can hold it, you know, if you got in at a low, if you follow our block and you got in at the low and then you made money over here, right? Now is a good time to, you know, maybe cash out a bit and see what happens at this key, uh, key area. If it, if it really breaks the, you know, if it really breaks the, the, the descending resistance, if it really breaks the overlap resistance, right? If it breaks this level over here, then we have a high chance of price rising up, okay? More than anything, I would say, you know, cryptocurrency follows, um, you know, the uh, technical analysis a lot. So, so do your own te technical analysis when it comes to trading cryptocurrency, right? And many of you guys might be asking, so what exchange do I recommend? Uh, actually, right, interestingly, um, Tickmill, right, uh, Tickmill allows cryptocurrency tr cryptocurrency trading uh, through its CFDs. So if even if you load the, you know, the Tickmill MT4, which I'm going to show you over here, right, look the Tickmill MT4, um, you need to, yeah, you need to do this thing, right click and click show all, right, and you can see, and you can see, you scroll down all the way to the bottom, you see Litecoin, you see Ethereum, you know, you can see Bitcoin, right? So you can actually trade Bitcoin on your Tickmill MT4, which is super useful because you don't need to worry about, you know, um, finding an exchange, opening a crypto wallet, which might be hacked and stuff, right? Uh, you know, uh, and you can actually trade it on a higher leverage, right? So um, do consider, you know, trading um, Bitcoin, especially on Tickmill. Okay, now um, in future sessions, what we'll do is uh, we, can, we can look and monitor the prices of not only Bitcoin, but we can look at you know, Ethereum, we can look at Litecoin, we can look at all the different kind of cryptocurrencies out there, how to navigate them, how to trade them. You know, um, personally for me, you know, uh, how, um, I'm heavy, heavy, heavily into technical analysis. So I can share with you how we can you know, apply technical analysis, very, very advanced technical analysis that allowed us to, to make, uh, you know, to, to, make, to call the bounce from here all the way up to here, right? And we also caught the drop from here down to here, right? So we've been following the tick mu block and okay, I can see, you know, where is the tick mu block? <laughs> uh, go to tickmu.com, head over to, mark, you know, under client tools, head over to uh, market insights or you can click on technical analysis, right? So when you click on technical analysis, you get to see all the range of, um, you know, uh, technical analysis that I do. You can see those that were created by me, right? Um, yeah, so you know we post a hell lot of technical analysis here uh, on on crypto and stuff like that. So go check it out, okay? Um, but anyway, anyway, without deviating too much, right? Um, I'm I'm glad that you guys have. <laughs> we actually have really good uh uh numbers, right? For people who are staying all the way throughout the webinar, right? I do want to ask for one favor right now, bef uh, before I move any further, and and that is right. If you don't mind. Right. Um, if you don't mind, just launch a poll for you guys. Right. Could you just give me a, a quick poll and let me know how do you find today's webinar? Uh, one is to five. You know, don't worry. You can. It's anonymous, so you can vote one. Uh, you can vote five. Right. Don't worry if you vote one. I won't come and hunt you down and stuff. Right. But at least let me know. Um, let me know how you found the webinar. 
right? Whether you found this format useful, give me feedback, right? If you, because, you know, if, if you guys like it, you know, we can continue doing more of these webinars over time, you know, whether it's a cryptocurrency trading series, a technical analysis series, you know, um, fundamentals, technicals, you know, kind of look at the, look at the whole world of trading together. But first and foremost, you know, of course, Tickmill kind of wants to know whether, <laughs> how do you guys find the webinar? Right, so uh, yeah, do me a favor, uh, give me an honest opinion, and if you want to, please um, leave your feedback, you know, in the uh, in the chat section. Right, you can say that yeah, you know, it sucks. I was hoping to see more crypto, or Desma, I want to see your cat. You know, where is your cat? <laughs> right, so just let me know, and I'll find ways. Uh, um, what's work for it to improve the um, webinar over time? Okay, but thank you very much because I do see that almost uh, more than 90% of you guys are saying that uh, the webinar, uh, you know, you give it a good four to five. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Right? <laughs> yeah, it's uh, uh, more or less live and die by these numbers. Right? So you've been very merciful. Thank you. Thank you. Right. So yeah, um, I'm going to end the poll right now. Right. I'm going to end the poll right now. Right. Because we've got a majority of people who have um, voted. Thank you very much for um, for voting, right? I can see 90% of you guys who voted four and five. Um, once again, thank you very much, right? And um, and yeah, you know, um, if anything, please, um, please let me know, right? When it comes to, um, where, where, where is the thing I'm gonna show? Yeah, if, if anything, thank, uh, thank you very much for tuning in to this webinar all the way, right? Um, uh, uh, yeah, tuning into this webinar all the way. I can see that, you know, a good bunch of you stayed through all the way, right? Um, I'm accepting questions along the way right now. So if you have questions that you want to kind of shoot out at me, now's a great time, right? Walter is sharing that, you know, is hoping to learn more how to enter good trades, right? Um, that, will um, that can cover, uh, that can come in um, on our technical analysis series, right? Where we really drill down into um, the whole world of support and resistance, Fibonacci, retracements, extensions, projections, expansions, correlations, um, uh, correlations, oscillators, divergence, um, <laughs> chart patterns, right? Uh, hopefully, um, in, you know, now that we covered the basics, uh, the cryptocurrency, you know, we can, you know, those are some things that we can look at, right, um, in the future. But thank you, um, uh, Walter is asking, you know, do robots help? A, when it comes to trading robots, right, um, I recommend you to exercise caution. Some robots are not are not designed to trade um, cryptocurrencies, right? Um, and they might not be used to the same volatility, uh, the crazy amount of volatility that crypto has versus forex. Robots do help, but um, you you, you got to do your own back testing first, right? If you know how to um, personally, um, there's a whole other topic on, on back testing. But right off the top of my head, if you want to do robots, right, try to go for MT5. MT5 allows you to um, to use um, tick by tick back testing, right? Allows you to have a multi-core, a multi-threaded back testing kind of system, so you can utilize more of your computer CPU power to do back testing, right? So it first, uh, if you want to use robots, first and foremost, back test, forward test with what with MT5. You can do it MT4, but it's going to be a lot slower because MT4 can only utilize a single thread. Okay, I hope that answers your questions, Walter. Right, but yeah, you know with the um, I cannot say which robots will help. Some robots can definitely trade well, but you do need to um, make sure you backtest thoroughly with real take data, not with fake data, right? Your, your, your testing quality needs to be very high. Um, uh, yeah, I can see Jalu saying that there should be more webinars like this presenting difference between various cryptocurrencies and their correlations. You know, how value of Bitcoin uh, affects value of other cryptocurrencies. And all right, looking forward to more um webinars right so awesome right today is uh, happens to be the very first webinar that we're doing uh for cryptocurrencies uh for tick meal um it's nice to see that you know uh there's a very very good response um people like it right and i really appreciate it right so hopefully um what how i like to always design these webinars is i like to take the feedback uh, from 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 you guys right and and design the webinar accordingly right so if you want um if i find that there's a lot of people who want to know the correlation be between Bitcoin prices and, for example, you know, um, I'm just going to just pull it up really quickly here. You know, for example, Bitcoin, you want to compare the bit price of Bitcoin to ETH USD, right, on the same percentage scale, right? Um, so, yeah, so there you go. You know, you can see the prices of the correlation of, of Bitcoin, you know, with maybe in this example with Ethereum. Right, so this was a very interesting time over here, 
where uh, Bit uh, Bitcoin rose a bit, but Ethereum kind of shot up, right? But you do notice that they kind of go up and down together, right? There are many tools that can use to really correlate the price of Bitcoin. Bitcoin is the market leader, so it does dictate a lot of prices along the way, right? But yes, um, yeah, hopefully over time we can look at the more exotic stuff, you know, Dogecoin even, right? And, uh, and how to trade it, right? But but yeah, thanks for your feedback, Janus. Thank for, thanks for your feedback, Walter and Aruna, right? Um, um, but yeah, um, any other questions that uh, if you know, if there are no other questions rather that you have for me, I'd like to thank everyone. Uh, I'd like to thank everyone for um, you know, for tuning in today, uh, for sitting through the entire webinar, the attendance, the attendance and the attention rate has been great. So thank you very much, right? Um, I, uh, I hope that, you know, this webinar help you better understand the whole world of crypto. Right. And, you know, if any questions, you know, feel free to send it through. Um, take meal, right. Uh, the support, you know, I, I, I do a lot of the analysis there. So the, the, you will, one way or another, uh, the messages will come back to me. <laughs> okay. Anyway, guys, um, that, it, that's it for me. Right. Thank you so much for tuning into this webinar. I, you know, please, um, yeah, trade safe, stay safe. And yeah, I'm looking very young. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 I have no idea why. <laughs> Maybe I got enough sleep this morning. My cat allowed me to get a little bit more sleep. <laughs> All right, guys. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for tuning in to Batonomew. Right. Uh, uh, and thank you very much, Andrew. Right. Uh, <laughs> that's it for me. Yeah, even wearing red today, man. All right. Okay. See you guys. Uh, cheers and peace out, guys. Peace out. <laughs>